Hello, my name is Faisal Khan. A couple of years ago, I wrote an article called Architecting a Mobile Wallet and How to Go About It. You know, I just basically put my thoughts into the article, never thinking, you know, that more than 10 people would read it. And it sort of went viral. Uh, so today, I, I'll, I'll, by the way, I'll include the link to the article down below, but I want to run through it and let you know what my premise was in getting the article out. The first thing when people design a mobile app or a you know, mobile money app or a payments app or a financial inclusion or a banking app is they just design it because they think that, you know, this is the problem and this is what we want to do. I think the first thing you really have to know is, you know, what sort of an area and vertical are you going to be operating in? I'll be putting many items and sort of a pictures throughout the screen as I talk about this video. For example, the, the image you will see right now is basically, you know, the various a value added services that are in the payments vertical with the lowest being the P2P market. And you know, you can go up high school fees, tuition, loans, etc. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to just go through the article very quickly in this video and explain my process to you. First thing is spending personas differ. Every person spends differently. And until you don't know how one person spends the money and how the other person spends the money, you can't make a generalized assumption. So the first thing is we try to see, okay, how many people spend, you know, $20 on chewing gum every month? Okay, so we have one person, two person, three person, four person. And when we have, you know, 5,000 people, we know that there's a segment that spends $20 on chewing gum every month. We know someone likes eating more than four hamburgers a month. We know someone who pays 30% of their income in rent. These are all different personas that you need to understand when you go out in the field it is absolutely absolutely imperative that you take the idea that you're trying to do and get it validated what that means is you are trying to solve a problem but before you go and announce your problem this is what you want to do you want to do and want to understand you know who the people are what their personas are i will show you some examples of what a persona is, uh, an individual persona looks like and this all comes through the field study field research you know discussion groups etc and what you want to do is you want to go out there, you want to talk to people, you want to t tell them, hey, you know, what do you think is a problem in, in society? What do you think is a problem in money? What do you think it can be improved? Believe me, if, if the problem you're thinking is a problem, chances are that they will tell you that it's a problem. So you need to go and get a consensus from the market that this is indeed a problem. And then naturally, the second thing to do is to validate what the problem, you know, the, what the solution is. Ask someone what a problem is, they'll be happy to tell you. And chances are they even have an opinion of how to solve it. So you ask more and more people and if more and more people are telling you the same way of how to solve it, maybe that's the solution that they want to see. So you know, you can go and validate your problem and then get an understanding of what it is. And this is done through various discussion groups that you go out there, you have questionnaires, you ask them, what do you like about money? What do you don't like about money? How do you spend your money? What is difficult thing about your money? How, you know, why would you open a banking app? Why would you not open a banking app? How often do you open a banking app? How, what do you like about your mobile wallet? What do you don't like about your mobile wallet? What do you like about your physical wallet that is not in the mobile wallet? What would you like something that is available in your physical wallet virtually be available in your mobile wallet? These are just some of the questions. There are many, many people that will teach you how to do field research. Jan Chip Chase is one person that comes to mind. He's got the field, you know, the field research manual is done by him. Again, the link is down below. I highly, highly suggest you to read it. But discussion groups are done, you know, with the various personas. And in order to do the discussion groups, you have to have a very good questionnaire for you to have it. And the initial 10, 15, 20, 50 people that you have in your discussion group, that's where the questions will form from. Once you have the questions validated, then you do the survey. And with the surveys, you know, you'll have to do something like a Kanban board. You know, it's a very easy organizational structure. I'll include some links to what a Kanban is. And I highly, highly suggest that you learn how to use that. Because when you amass all these things, when you amass, when you bring together, when you correlate all the you know, initial discussions groups, all the questions you had, all the answers, the validation of the problem, the solution of the problem, the discussion groups that you had with the Kanban and closed discussion 
session groups, the various personas that you start making, then the picture starts emerging. Then you really start seeing, okay, this is the problem. This is the opportunity. This is where I can make money. This is where I cannot make money. And this is where you go deeper. This is where you have to find the Goldilocks conditions. What are the conditions you need to meet? What must be met before this thing becomes a reality? What needs to happen in society exactly right for this to happen? What are those things? Chances are that more of these questions you will never understand. The, some of the conditions that need to be met, you will never uh, have the answer to. But you need to find more and more answers. What are the Goldilocks conditions? Because only when these conditions are met, will what you are trying to achieve will happen. Because that is why it has ha hasn't happened in society so far, because the conditions have not been met. And this is very important for you to understand. With this understanding, you will have personas, your buyer's persona, your customer's persona, your seller's persona, your interactive you know, personas of the people you will actually do business with. Who, what do they look like? Who are they? You know, when someone says, who's your customer? Oh, my customer is someone who wants to drive a car. But yeah, but who is he? Is he a young person? Is he an old person? Is he a male? Is he female? Is he married? Is he single? Are they professionals? Are they unemployed? These are so many questions because once you have this information, can only then you make a product for it. If you don't know what the customer looks like, how can you make a product for it? Think of it as no, as no different as you want to make have a burger. If you don't know what people want, how can you make a burger for them? This is why you know the Whopper by Burger King is so famous because of the fact that they made a good burger and they said, oh, you know what, from our research, some people like tomatoes, some people like, don't like tomatoes, some like onions, some don't like onions, some like pickles, some don't like pickles. So they have a menu, you can cross out pickles, no tomatoes, no pickles, no onion, no mayonnaise, hold the ketchup, etc. You can all do that and Burger King can do that very, very fast and hence they have a very successful Whopper. So. If you understand what clients want and don't want, what customers want and don't want, you the, the personas will be more and more exact. You also have to understand where in the pyramid, the information pyramid, do these customers lie. Everyone is different. Are you catering for the bottom of the pyramid or are you catering at very, you know, top, you know, the, the Gucci product crowd, you know, the ones who are absolutely high net worth individuals. You need to understand where your market is. Is it the middle segment market? Is it the blue collar market? Is it the white collar market? Is it a little bit of both? That is something you have to understand. How I pay for my service versus how you pay for your service is very, very different. Different. And why I pay for my service the way I do, the way you do, is going to be very different. And you have to understand the answers to these questions. Now you may say, well, you know, Faisal, this is a whole lot of bull and a whole lot of this and a whole lot of that. Well, guess what? Successful products, they've all gone through this cycle. They have all gone through the cycle. It is no hidden secret. It is not a secret formula. This is the standard template that everyone follows. There is something very obvious you need to understand, which is discovery of necessity. You have to discover what is necessary to these people that they want and they want to utilize right now. And that, those are the kind of products and services you want to make and deliver upon. You also have to solve the cash on delivery problem, the cash problem, the cash only problem. I will pay by cash problem. And that again will come through the discussion forums that you have, through the discussion groups that you have, through, by incentivizing. You can, you can think of ways, ask people, what would it make take you or make you use cash? In COVID-19 times, I think the answer is very simple. They don't trust banknotes. They think they might have the germs on it or the viruses on it and so forth. And this is why we will go more digital and digital. It took a pandemic for us to look at this turn, but you know, people have short memories. Maybe they come back and go back to cash. So you have to incentivize. You have to give them a proper reason and you have to do so by thinking along and, and being in their shoes, not your shoes. This is extremely important for you. Also, you have to understand that not everything is going to be digital. Sometimes it's going to be a hybrid. It's going to be an offline and an online model. Sometimes it's going to be 20% offline and 80% off online. Sometimes it's going to be the, the reverse, where you only have 20% online and 80% is offline. But And then you have to transition through one way or the other. Either you will go all, all digital or all, you know, partially digital and 50% digital, etc. But you have to take the analog component into mind. You can't operate without the analog. This is a mistake that many, many wallet providers and you know financial app providers do. They think, oh, it's, it's just going to be an online world and a digital world. Yes, it's going to be a digital world. It's going to be a digital world, but there are analog factors that must be taken into consideration. 
All this then comes down into a lean canvas. I will include the lean canvas example below. You put it into a one pager and that one pager tells you, okay, what is your problem you're trying to solve? What is the opportunity? Where's the money? Who's the competition? What are the strengths, weaknesses, opportunity, threats? Where can I make money? Where can I have a real big advantage? How fast I can go to market? The lean canvas template. And this is how you architect a mobile wallet or a financial application or a financial app, whatever, in nomenclature notwithstanding here. You have to build stickiness. You have to look at how people can keep, you know, keep engaging with your app, but then take it from their feedback as to how they would engage. Don't assume yourself. You are not the customer. You have to open up your APIs. Open up your APIs for the developing world out there. Open up the APIs for the developers out there. Open the APIs so that it's a more open platform so that people can innovate on it based on your baseline product offering. Build it and they will come. So maybe in some cases you have to go out and sign up, you know, 10,000 agents or 10,000 merchants or 20,000 merchants or go into remote cities. Or You have to do this. You have to look at your Pareto values. Who are the 20% of the businesses that generate 80% of the income? Those must be signed up. You have to look at which are the cities that generate most income. You have to go there, the towns and the cities that are generating the most income. And only then you can go into the little pockets of, you know, of your community, etc., which were not being covered before or the merchants that were not be covered before but you have to build it before they come no one is going to take an app and say oh you know what these guys are going to sign up 10,000 merchants over the next year no they want to have the app and you know what they want to know oh 10,000 merchants are already signed up that is how it works i don't believe it's going to be the end of the cash but it will be in greatly to your advantage to go digital today. And this is not just for a mobile app, a financial app, for cross-border payment systems, for domestic payment system, for hybrid payment systems, going digital is it. If you would like help in your journey in going digital, please feel free to reach out. There's a contact form in the description below. That's the only way to get in touch with me or the WhatsApp, uh, which again, I would still directly to the contact app, even if you contact me to the WhatsApp number below. If you have a general comment on this video, please feel free to comment below. I have opened my comments. And if you have a question or, or a suggestion, again, feel free to put it down there. I hope I was able to shed some light on this process of what it takes to architect a mobile wallet or a mobile app or a financial app, etc. As always, I'm very happy for you to watch my videos. If you like this video, you know, you can hit the like button, subscribe, I leave it up to you. I don't like pushing people to subscribe, but if you like it, please push subscribe. And anyways, till next time, this is Faisal Khan signing off.